Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Leslie Mitchell. I go by BK Scully on IRC and on Twitter. Um, I am a geek. I've been a geek among, along a whole bunch of different axes for my entire life. And I am also mostly a woman. Uh, while I was a professional system, systems administrator for 17 years, I became interested, as many women do, in the fact that there were very few other women around me within the environment in which I was working. And as the increase of women talking about this online, on blogs, on Twitter, and on other social media uh, became uh, more visible, I became interested in why this wasn't being talked about in other environments. Um, what caused me to move forward with this was I became bored. <laughs> I'm a geek, I get bored. Uh, the, the job that I was doing was not fully um, uh, providing me with enough enough challenge and so I decided that the thing I needed to do was a master's in something I'd never done before. So I looked around and I did a part-time master's with the Open University in the UK in philosophy because having done a degree in chemistry and worked for at that point 10 years within the IT industry, philosophy was the obvious next move. <laughs> What interested me about that was, once again, though the cohort around me was not as strongly um, gender imbalanced and also race, class, disability and all of the other uh, axes of um, discrimination, for want of a better term, uh, that um, the environment I'd been working in IT had been, the people whose work we were studying was almost entirely a cohort of dead white men. Uh, so for my master's dissertation for my philosophy degree, I deliberately went and found a topic that I could talk about women and I could talk about not only women, but also women writers and women academics, and look at and, and try and break the theory that women don't know stuff. But the thing that I, I found with philosophy was that it was theoretical, very uh, dry, and through that period that I, t I, I did that master's degree, which was over a course of three years, I became much more involved in activism, if not personally, in at least standing at the sides and going, what they said, <laughs> which, you know, has its place. So from there, I quit my job, because I had reached a point, not only was I bored, but I was extremely mentally unhealthy in the work that I was doing. I was at a very low ebb, and I was enormously fortunate that I was able to quit and focus on myself. Um, and I chose the opportunity once I had got to a point where I was no longer at the point where getting out of bed every day was difficult to go back to university again, because, you know, learning is fun. And on this occasion, I took a master's uh, in sociology and research methods at the University of Glasgow. And I did this in the 2015-2016 uh, uh, academic year. Um, with the intention of trying in the limited time and funds that are available for a master's dissertation to cover some of the things that I wanted to talk about with respect to 
people within uh, people who don't match the overall dynamic, the overall demographic of a group, and how that changes their experience of the group. So my master's dissertation has this enormously long and, and terrible title of um, uh, exploring the lived experience of uh, women within geek communities um, in online and offline communication. Because what I was trying, or what I wanted to do, and did not have either the uh, time or the word count, was to look at a whole range of issues that I think are very important, uh, which apply to all geek communities. And I, I really do define geek in a very broad way. Um, we are, well, many of us identify as geeks, uh, as people within IT, but people, I, I, I've also been in geek communities within uh, media, so fandoms for science fiction, writing and television shows and films and for comic books and, you know, pretty much everything. And of course these days geek is also taken by people who are very keen on knitting and very keen on, so I wanted to look at geek as a very broad term, but I also had to focus because I only had three months to do my research and my write-up and, you know, <laughs> There's only so much time in, the li in, in one's life. So, because I had the opportunity, because I have been part of the Debian community, if not an active part, um, for 15 plus years, maybe more, I took the opportunity to look at Debian for this, this and see how people who do not match the base demographic of Debian experience their, the, um, the community um, and whether that was different to those who did. Um, and I particularly looked at this along the axis of gender because that's something that I know more about because that's where I've studied, but that's not to say that that's the only axis that is important. Again, back to disabilities, to uh, race, to class, to um, language even. So that's kind of how I got to where I got. What I did was, um, once I'd got it past the ethics committee who went, you want to talk to who about what? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to geeks. Who? You know, people who write, who write Linux. What's Linux? Right, okay. <laughs> I organized a handful, due to time constraints, of in-depth interviews with a number of people working within and part of the Debian community. Um, these were predominantly women. I had hoped to talk to uh, some people who were in different demographics, but unfortunately, um, when it came down to it, you were all in Cape Town and I was in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, but you know, a master's dissertation doesn't come with a stipend, and there was no way I could afford the flight. So I did a number of interviews. They lasted about an hour. We had a chat, we tried, I tried not to focus as so many of the, you know, women in technology things do on, so, how were people rude to you today? <laughs> but to look at the holistic experience, how, actually how people experience being within this community and whether they find that because they are not part of the main demographic, there are challenges or advantages even. Um, and so, yes, I, I spoke to many people and uh, I, I synthesized, I, 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 I gained a large amount of, of audio and video to, uh, to, to, to transcribe. I did this um, across Google Hangouts and Skype mostly because every, no one, <laughs> there was nobody around in Glasgow. Come to Glasgow, it's nice. <laughs> um, and then I sat down and spent 
many, 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 many hours transcribing so that I could take what I had heard and try and produce some sort of write-up to tell people that I'd actually done some work. And what I found, uh, which is probably the most interesting thing, I don't, I didn't have answers. The aim of the, the research was not to produce, to, 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 to go, look, this general community, this is what happens and therefore we should do this. What I wanted was more to, to go, this is how it is for these people. So rather than trying to, 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 um, to come up with a, an answer, because that's difficult, uh, that, that was what I was trying to do. And what I found was that yes, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not the big things that get talked about in the, uh, the articles about you know, people being sexually harassed at work, it's not um, constant, it, it's, not, it, it's not about, uh, about rape, it's not about being denied promotions, it's not about um, all of the, the, the big things, it's about the day-to-day -day things, it's about the language that people use that subtly tells you you're not welcome. It's about the way that you have to try that bit harder when people know that you're not one of the boys to be accepted. It's the fact that, you, that if you have a gut feeling about something, you have to actually then go away and go and do the work to prove it rather than just have your gut feeling accepted the way that maybe you would find if you weren't known to be out of the, the main demographic. And so yes, there was a lot of, of negative there. But, and I like this but because it makes me happy, because I could then bring out a theorist. There's a theorist called Foucault, and Foucault talked about, he was a Frenchman, he talked about power um, and the way that power structures um, cause people who are not in, not who don't have the power, uh, problems. Um, but what he talked about in response to that was that the people who don't have power get together and they resist. And that was the thing that I found quite heartening, was that despite the fact that people may not have necessarily the power because they aren't part of the, the main demographic, because they may suffer from these constant microaggressions that are wearing, that make everything that a little bit more um, hard work. To go back to what Enrico was talking about earlier in the week, that using the spoon theory, that rather than it taking one spoon to do something, it takes one and a half because you have to go through an extra level of, um, of effort to get something done. What I found that was that people were getting together and there were initiatives and people were coming and going, okay, we are part of the main group and we can see that these are problems for some people, but we have enough spoons of our own that we can help and we can show people who are part of the demographic that maybe the way that they are acting is, um, is hurting the project because the people that there are people out there who have good ideas that need to, to happen that aren't necessarily being listened to or are taking much more time to get uh, through a process. So initiatives like Debbie and Women, um, Rhonda's new initiative around Debbie and diversity, that was heartening to see. Um, but it was also heartening to see that people were doing that without necessarily there being an overarching group doing it. People were just getting together and supporting each other and going, yeah, I suffer that too, it's okay. Or these are the ways that, these are people that you can talk to who won't do that. Or if you approach this person in this way. So for me, that, 
that was nice. I was able to then come back and structure it and go, look, we've got domination and resistance and I can talk Foucault and um, I got a, a half decent mark on my, my thesis and I got a, a merit overall on the, the masters. Um, and so for me, that was great. And what I'd like to do um, continuing is to expand that uh, so that where when I did my literature review, I could find people who had talked about engineers, and I could find people who had talked about mining, and I could find people who had talked about... There was this huge hole where people, no one had talked about people in IT. And no one had really talked about the way that things differ when I'm over here in this country, and the people I talk to are all over there in that country, and we only ever talk across text in IRC, or possibly on websites and bug reports. And so we make up our own ideas about people, and then maybe we're very fortunate and we come to DevConf, and we have to see each other and go, oh, you don't fit the idea that I'd come up with for you, and how that changes the way that people perceive each other. So not only was I trying to look at um, people's actual experiences, and, and that was very important to me, to, to, to hear people's own word, <coughs> excuse me, words, but I also really wanted to look at it from a, a much more global perspective, and there just wasn't time in a master's, so, you know, somebody fund me, I want to do the PhD. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's pretty much my one minute. Okay, uh, can I ask people for sort of questions if they have any? <laughs> there is a microphone, please use it. I just wanted to ask, um, when you completed the write-up, uh, was in there of the positive side of things as well, or were you only focusing on the, the balance of power things? I, I, I tried to use talking about the balance, try, try using the, the, the Foucauldian idea of, of domination, resistance, power and resistance to, to show that there was um, not only the downsides but also this much more positive um, thing that where people were, were, were building their own communities and, and, and making time to try and change the outlook of the, the main community. Thank you. Makes a bit noise uh, for me, but uh, I don't know it maybe because I am on the dominant side. Uh, I said well uh, when, when it was uh, Videl's talk about well early Debian history and such that during the last 15 years I've been part of the project. I have seen the change from a male-dominated, uh, aggressive, uh, uh, macho culture to a very tolerant, very open one. I guess well yeah you can you can not say the transition is complete until many remaining factors uh, are dealt with. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I do feel is a bit of tension when you say there is still is, or, or I understand you say there still is this uh, domination resistance uh, thing. So how do you think we, we have a transition? In the, uh, how far, how? Certainly by, um, uh, and I was, quite keen to, to talk about the fact that uh, the, the community has done, has made major strides, as you say, um, putting in place things like the code of conduct, the diversity statement, um, actually thinking about things, changing documentation language from he to they. All of these things are just that little bit more welcoming, but you go back to uh, the figures for the number of DDs, and of about a thousand DDs, there's what, 15, 20 women? Less. Less. <laughs> Less. So, uh, I had to do sort of 
vague numbers because uh, people don't all sort of say yes, I'm a woman, and and, and I don't. Want, I also don't want to just balance it on men, women, because you know the world is more interesting than that. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are still strides, but yes, definitely the, the, the community has is not um, uh, the way it, it, it was, and certainly, uh, nor is it the way that some other communities remain. So I think Debian is, 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 is working very hard and, and it's thinking about things at the very least. Um, and uh, we should congratulate ourselves for that, but we definitely shouldn't rest on our laurels. Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, thank you for this, this answer. I wanted to build upon your question precisely with this idea that there's a moving target. So uh, once we've uh, come up with a code of conduct, I mean, it's great and uh, we can be proud about it, but it doesn't mean that, you know, uh, we can't go further. Uh, um, yeah, on a positive note, I wanted to say that to me, uh, this community in DevConf uh, is a great source of inspiration because even though, you know, I can see that, uh, you know, clearly uh, the demographic is, you know, not as diverse as we could hope for, uh, you know, relative for, to, for example, my work environment, you know, these things are talked about. Uh, I mean, your talk is one example. Uh, the conference opens up with uh, the code of conduct and things like that. So I think that, uh, you know, uh, all these things are moving, uh, you know, both in absolute terms and in, I mean, maybe no, absolute doesn't exist, but relative to different things. And for example, relative to my um, workplace, I would say we're very advanced out here. Uh, so that's great, and yet we still have, we can learn from other communities as well, or other environments. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I went to university, I did chemistry in the mid-90s. Uh, there were a little over 100 people on my course, there were three women. Things have changed, thankfully, with respect to that, and it's, it's, more, it's better. But still, you look at the number of senior scientists, and it's still low, so... Uh, this is not something that just we as geeks need to think about, but if we are going to, as we often do, go, we're a lot more advanced than everybody else, we should actually, you know, maybe be a lot more advanced than everybody else. Um, about statistics, about developers, uh, uh, I need to apologise because at the application manager side, we haven't actually removed inactive, develop inactive developers for about five years, so if all goes well within the next couple of months, there should be about two to three hundred less developers, which should inc increase the relative percentage of women in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's probably not the way to do it. <laughs> it helps, because if people can go, oh, I don't look like I'm the only, to, to, to use a, a quote from a, a British sitcom, the only gay in the village. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it much easier to walk into an environment, to walk into an environment and go, hello, none of you look like me. This is scary. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, it helps. The actual question I wanted to ask is, what, since you've seen uh, various patterns of uh, things where it takes more effort because one belongs to a specific diversity community, were there patterns you have seen that are not necessarily related to gender? And oh, yes. Uh, that I would be interested to add examples. Um, there certainly were. Uh, I was particularly focusing on gender because, um, as I say, uh, I, I looked at feminist philosophy, so I kind of uh, stuck with, uh, with, with feminism. Um, I'm not sure I can necessarily give an example. Um, uh, I think we're... Um, we're doing better at, at increasing people from other, from non-anglophone countries and from non, uh, non-Western European, North American type areas. Going to Cape Town last year was probably an extremely good thing in that respect to, to give people the opportunity who couldn't necessarily f go from there to here or to, to Europe. But uh, yeah, I, I don't have any particularly specific examples on that, sorry. Hello. Hello. Um, thanks for your talk. I, I wanted to comment a little bit on the, um, the ongoing strategy of making communities better. And I think um, 
while it's really exciting to see some progress, I think when people come to that part of the work and are new, they're like, wow, this was really hard. Like just to get like a code of conduct that says like, in some community, not specifically here, like just to say, have something that says, it is not okay to touch other people at the conference. And the people have done that, they're like, wow, that was really hard. And then they're like, but now we're done. We could just go back to hacking. And we're like, um, that's actually like the lowest common denominator. And, and it was hard, and we really appreciate that. And I'm sorry if it felt like the party where we appreciated you for helping us get a no touching other attendees felt a little short because we all went off to do the next thing. Um, but we do see that work and it's, um, it's if the, the celebration party seems short, it's because some of us know there's a lot more to do. And so, um, you know, feel appreciated, I suppose, but also, you know, hey, the, the next party is also a working party where we go and do the next thing and get, uh, you know, beyond the lowest common denominator. So I just wanted to comment on, that. that is, I think, common to how it feels in the middle of that kind of work to get to a place where everyone actually does really feel welcome. Sure, absolutely. I mean, it, it's terribly easy to watch people giving out cookies for, hey, you're a decent human being. Well, that's very nice, but uh, there's more to it than that. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for your comment. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to be around probably sat in the cafeteria for the rest of the afternoon, so if you do want to come and chat with me, feel free. Um, I'll be sat with my mum, because I brought my mum to DevConf. <laughs> <laughs>